Thank you all for coming here today. I will now read from my pre-prepared statement. As you all know, my original vision for the Sans Is Ness episode of Game Theory was totally ruined by the studio. That's why, for years, fans have been crying out to see that episode in its originally conceived grimdark glory. So, as a result, I've partnered with HBO, who will be giving me $30 million to turn that pivotal story of one video game character secretly being another video game character back into into the original vision that I had for it, a six-part miniseries. Of course, because the direction the channels have had to go in the intervening years, none of it will be canon. Unless people really like it, then maybe it'll be canon. Or have it splinter off into an alternate canon universe of theories, not quite sure yet. No further questions at this time. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where our upcoming director's cut will feature all 750 film and game theory episodes with all the demonetizable cut content added back in, including the 14-minute nude ballet originally intended for the Thanos vs. Ant-Man butt episode. Not gonna wanna miss that one. It was considered too hot for YouTube. The people who've seen it, though, phew, they only have this to say. Why? But, despite this landmark announcement, I'm afraid that our director's cut is being overshadowed by another director's cut, the infamous Snyder Cut of Justice League. To catch you up, WB's big superhero team-up movie was met with a big meh back when it first hit theaters in 2017, and to a certain subset of fans, it didn't make sense. I mean, this was THE Justice League. I mean, we're talking Batman, Aquaman, Flash Man, Mustache Man, Robot Man, and Girl coming together. This wasn't gonna be a Marvel rainbow-colored flouncy-trouncy adventure. This was gonna be epic, grimdark. We live in a society and it's gonna tell us about it. And it wasn't. To many who watched the movie, it was just forgettable. Almost immediately, a rumor began spreading about a wildly different cut of the movie, a four-hour version that had existed when original director Zack Snyder was helming the project. You see, after a terrible family tragedy forced Zack off the project, Warner Brothers brought former Avengers director Joss Whedon on board to retool Zack's vision into something more mainstream. The result was more color, more comedy, and more confusion, because it was a big departure from the gritty, darker tone of the movies that had come before. And so fans started a massive grassroots movement to, quote, release the Snyder Cut. That original four-hour edit expressing the original director's original vision of the film, which may or may not have actually ever existed. Adding fuel to the fire was the fact that in the intervening years, a few people have come out to say that they've seen this fabled movie and that it was incredible. Fans wouldn't let the issue rest and kept pressure up for years, even getting original Justice League cast members like Jason Momoa on board. But finally, after three years of hashtags, billboards, petitions, HBO finally, finally announced that Zack Snyder's vision would get a chance to be seen on their new streaming service, HBO Max, next year after $30 million of additional production get infused in the project to finish it off. Whether or not it's a polished version of that original four-hour movie or, more likely, a six-episode miniseries is yet to be seen. But with this one announcement, a whirlwind of questions have come up. Will it be canon to the DCEU? Probably not, unless it's a hit. Will actors that have left the universe like Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill return to the series? Probably not, unless it's a hit. Will we finally get to see Justice League 2 The New Gods? Probably not, unless it's a hit. You'll notice a theme here, the caveat of it being a hit, which I think is a moot point. Loyal film theorists, it's my theory today that the Snyder Cut has zero chance of failing. Notice that I didn't say it would be a great movie. Far from it. I think it'll be a confused, gritty mess at worst, and slightly better than the original at absolute best. No, it's my theory today that the Justice League Snyder Cut is too big to fail. There are so many things going for this thing that it's about as close to a guaranteed slam dunk winner as you can get. So I'm calling it now. The Snyder Cut is gonna be a smash hit, and today, I'm gonna prove to you why. Let's start where this whole thing started and talk about the fans. Clearly, there is a large group of impassioned fans who fought for years to make this movie happen. This group would seem like they'd be the harshest critics for a movie like this. Hardcore fans of the franchise scrutinizing every last detail to make sure it's comic correct, and that would be true if it weren't for one teen 
teeny tiny little thing standing in their way, basic human psychology. Back in 1959, a researcher named Leon Festinger got test subjects to do an excruciatingly boring activity, turning pegs in a pegboard for an hour. Those test subjects were then paid either $1 or $20 to basically lie to the next person in line for the test, telling them that this boring experiment would actually be fun for them. That next person in line, by the way, was just another researcher, so it was all part of the experiment. Anyway, when the original test subjects were asked to rate the overall fun of that peg turning, the test subjects paid only $1 rated the experiment as more fun than those who were paid $20. The conclusion that Festinger reached here was that the test subjects only earning $1 had basically convinced themselves that the activity was more fun in order to justify the fact that they did it in the first place, whereas those paid $20 had enough outside reward to be honest about how lame the activity really was. This led to the theory of cognitive dissonance, it's actually one of my all-time favorite psychological phenomenon. Basically, that human psychology aims to hold our beliefs and behavior in a state of consistency. When there's a disharmony, or a dissonance, like saying something was fun when you know that it wasn't, the brain corrects itself to lessen that friction, to lessen the dissonance. In this case, convincing itself that things were more fun than they actually were. So the brain shifts its perceptions and says, you know what? It was actually more fun than I thought. You know the whole motto, fake it till you make it, like you're tired, but you pretend to not be tired and eventually your body catches up so that you're no longer feeling tired? Well, that is cognitive dissonance in a nutshell. Your actions say that you're not tired, but your brain thinks it is, creating this dissonance. And then, after seeing behavior of not being tired for long enough, the brain adjusts to correct itself, deciding that it wasn't actually tired after all. The reason I bring all of this up is that Justice League Snyder Cut fans are in this boat. For the last three years, they've been petitioning nonstop on social media to make this thing happen, believing that the Snyder Cut is gonna be some magical solution to what was otherwise a mediocre movie. That is a lot of time and energy and most importantly, emotional investment. As such, when the movie or miniseries or whatever comes out on HBO Max, even if it's bad, their brains won't wanna process it. It'll create dissonance. Their behavior for the past three years has said, this thing is gonna be good and the brain will be forced to adjust accordingly to fit that behavior, to correct for the dissonance. The long and short of it is that even if the Snyder Cut is bad or mediocre or whatever, their brains won't want to process the bad. This also ties into another psychological concept, belief perseverance. This probably won't come as much of a surprise to anyone who's been online, like, ever, but humans are very reluctant to change their minds about things. The first study of this was done by, again, our good buddy Leon Festinger. In this new study, he and his team of psychologists looked at cult members who were convinced that the world was going to end on December 21st, 1954. When it didn't, most believers still clung to their faith, even though it had just been proven wrong because, you know, planet Earth was still standing. In fact, defying all logic, future studies found that presenting evidence that debunks the belief may actually cause the incorrect belief to strengthen something deemed by psychologists as the backfire effect. As famous physicist Max Planck wrote in what has got to be one of the most accurate and depressing quotes of all time, the new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see right, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. Ever wonder why it's so hard to win an online Twitter argument or get a fan family member to remove an offensive Facebook post? Or heck, why so many people embroiled in controversies get second, third, and fourth chances at life? It's all the effects of belief perseverance and cognitive dissonance. So again, we see how Justice League can't fail in the eyes of the Snyder Cut fandom. Three years of being convinced it not only exists, but that it's gonna be great can't be wrong, even if it is objectively wrong. But let's be honest, the deck is certainly stacked in its favor. Look at another part of this equation. The project itself and its director, Zack Snyder. You know the saying, hindsight is 2020. Basically, it means that if put in a do-over situation, most people would learn from their mistakes and do a slightly better job the second time around. And that's exactly the position that Zack Snyder is currently in. At this point, he's gone to see all the critical responses to the original Justice League, the good and the bad. And no matter what his original vision for the film was, no matter what he added to that project versus what Joss Whedon added to that project, it doesn't matter. Now, he's able to shape it all into something 
something new, something that responds to a lot of those criticisms. You don't have to look too far to see how effective this can be. By listening to the fans, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie became the surprise underdog story of the year. And uh, let's be honest, it's currently on pace to be 2020's Oscar Best Picture winner considering nothing else is coming into theaters anytime soon. Yeah, that was just earlier this year, not an entire decade ago like it feels. Sonic's first trailer was horrific, causing the kind of fan backlash usually reserved for Star Wars films. When we first saw Sonic, he was terrifying. Tiny eyes, weird fur, huge human teeth that made everyone who saw the original trailer feel like Tom. <laughs> After the nearly universal negative reception to the trailer, Sony delayed the movie and spent millions reworking Sonic into something infinitely better. And the results speak for themselves, with the Sonic movie outpacing even its most optimistic projections to become the highest grossing video game movie in US history. Historically, movie studios keep customers at arm's length, storing all their film reels in secret vaults protected by top men to keep spoilers about Hulk's new stretch pants from leaking. As a result, by the time the first trailer for a movie drops, it's usually too late to change anything, and negative reactions can kill the project before it even hits theaters. But by listening to their audience, Sony engaged their customers, just like we do here on YouTube each and every week. Subscribe, if you haven't, by the way. It'd be really nice to get this channel to 10 million subscribers by the end of the year so we can get the diamond play button, which would make this miserable, sucky, sucky, awful, awful year suck just a little bit less for this channel. And it's literally free. Heck, YouTube barely shows you subscriptions anyway, so you'd be helping me feel better about life and costing yourself literally nothing. Probably not even your homepage feed, so if you could do that, that would be nifty. Anyway, you can see where I'm going with this, right? Zack Snyder not only has feedback from a trailer, he has feedback from a whole movie. He has all the market testing he needs to go back and remake his original vision into the best possible piece of cinema that he can based on what everyone was saying about the movie. Whether or not it was truly his original vision, it's actually kind of brilliant. And speaking of brilliant moves here, we gotta talk about HBO. Infusing another thing 30 million dollars into a three-year-old movie that already massively underperformed at the box office seems like it should be a bad idea, right? But Zack Snyder's mystery movie is a built-in marketing magnet. Even if you hated Justice League, or didn't even care about Justice League, seeing this new version that the fans unquestionably made happen is the kind of event that people aren't gonna wanna miss. Even if you haven't been actively involved for calling for the Snyder Cut, you've almost certainly seen the random release the Snyder Cut comments appearing on nearly every video anyone has posted on YouTube for the past three years, along with the incredibly popular hashtag release the Snyder Cut. The movement alone is gonna get the Snyder Cut a huge amount of media attention when it finally launches, and it might legitimately draw people into HBO Max if only for the two months that it runs. I mean, maybe I'm just being cynical here, but it doesn't surprise me that a service that offers a seven day and 30 day free trial period turns what we were told was a four hour movie into a potential six part mini series that'll take more more than a month to be fully released. Just saying. And here's the best part of all of this. It's airing on HBO Max. There's no way to know the real numbers. The whole thing could be awful. It could be a complete garbage fire of creativity that no one watches and even fewer subscribe to HBO Max for. And none of it would matter because the numbers are hidden. Unlike theatrical releases where you can very clearly measure the success or failure of a project based on box office earnings literally hours after a movie is released, on private streaming sites like HBO Max, Disney Plus, Netflix, there's no way to know the real data. What are these view counts? Are they in the millions? Are they in the hundreds of thousands? Are they just a thousand or ten thousand? You have no clue! But because this is a brand new streaming service and a massive project for that streaming service, I guarantee you HBO will ensure that this experiment will appear successful no matter how it actually turns out. So at the very best, you might get numbers of people who actually watch this thing. But at worst, you're still gonna be getting, this was great on the platform. We saw huge amounts of viewership and subscribership. We're thrilled with the reception and the turnout. The Snyder Cut is our most watched, whatever, 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 and we can't wait to do more with the director. The long and short of it all is that the Snyder Cut is just too big to fail. The audience is psychologically primed to like it. The director has all the tools that he needs to fix any previous mistakes, and the platform itself that it's airing on can tell us whatever it wants to about how it performs because there's no way to really know. It is a guaranteed success, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's the ship that launches a whole spin-off universe, even if this time, no one is really asking for it. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut.